This is geometry lesson 3.7, size transformations. Big idea says by multiplying the coordinates of points on a figure by a fixed non-zero number represented by K, you can create an image of the figure that looks very much like the original. So we're gonna take some figures, some points, and we're gonna transform their size, either enlarge them or we are going to shrink them. So activity number one here, we've got the sailboat pictured here on the graph, on the grid, and on the same grid, we're going to form a new picture by multiplying each coordinate of the name points by three. So we're going to take each one of these points, take their coordinates, multiply them by three, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to label these new points, the image of E, the image of D, and so on. So for example, B right here is four negative one, four negative one. All right, we're going to multiply both of those, the 4 and the negative 1, by 3 and get a new point of 12, negative 3. And this new picture that we're going to create will be called the image. So the image of B is at 12, negative 3. So let's put that on a graph, 12, negative 3, and we're going to label that the image of B. So we're going to do this for all of the points. So I'm going to start... Uh, over here on this side, let's start with E. I think just to make sure we don't make any silly mistakes, let's write down the point that E is, and then we will do the transformation and the size change by multiplying by 3, and then we'll show the image coordinates after that. So E over here is at negative 3, 0. And we're going to go through a transformation here, size transformation. We're going to get the image of E, multiply these by 3, so we're going to get negative 9, and we still have 0. So if we put that on the graph, negative 9, 0 is right here. So that is the image of E. Let's go ahead and do H. So H is right under E, so it's going to have the same X value, so negative 3, but it's down 1. So negative 3, negative 1 to start with. The image of H, after we multiply by 3, would be negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So we're going to negative 9, negative 3. And that's the image of H. I'm going to squeeze I in here, and then we'll go up top for the rest. So I is at negative 1, negative 3. So the image of I, after I multiply by 3, negative 3, negative 9. So negative 3, negative 9. That's the image of I. Slide up here. So D is at 1, 5. And after the transformation, the image multiplied by 3 is at 3, 15. So 3 all the way up to 15. And make sure you're labeling these. So that's the image of D. Let's do F. So be careful with F. You can see it's between the grid marks because here's one, here's two. So it's at 0.5, and it's still on that axis, so the Y value is 0. So the image, 3 times 0.5 is 1.5, and 3 times 0 is still 0. So this one doesn't move much. Here's one, so 1.5 would be right here. So there's the image of F. So we've done B, we still need to do J over here. So we're at 2, negative 3. So the image multiplied by 3 would be at 6, negative 9. There's the image of J. And the only thing we're missing now is G and C. So let's start with C. Looks like that's at 1, negative 1. 
So when we transform that by 3, we're going to get 3, negative 3. There's the image of C. And then the very last one, G. That's at 0.5 again, like F, and then down 1. So 0.5, negative 1. So multiply by 3, we're at 1.5. And negative 3. Now, if you notice in the original, F was right under G, right? So this should make sense. I'm at 1.5 again. I'm underneath F. And it was also lined up with C. So it should be lined up with C at negative 3, which it is. So 1.5 negative three is the image of G. So I'm gonna use a straight edge here and recreate this. So my flag was connected here, then across to F. All right, from F it went down to G. And then the boat here at the bottom gets created across to H, swoops down to I, straight across to J, up to B, straight across to C. Let's fix this one. All right, and then C, it's getting hard to see, went straight up to D, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that line too. All right, so it's gone through this transformation. It looks very similar, uh, but this has been enlarged. And we'll get into the nitty gritty stuff here in a second, but this would be enlarged by a magnitude of three because that's what we multiplied by. So in the second part here, we want to see where are these lines? B and the image of B, C and the image of C. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to connect the lines that go from any point to its image. That's what this is saying. From the original B to the image of B. From the original C to the image of C. The line that connects those. Not just the segment, but the line that goes on forever in both directions. So if I connect the image of D and the original D, it looks like that. Let's find J. Here's J. The image of J is down here. And if I carefully draw that line, it looks like this. Here's H and the image of H. Notice they're all starting to cross at the same place. The E's and the F's. They stayed here, so here's E, and here's the image of E still on that axis going through there. Let's do one more. Let's do B. B through B. And you can see they're all starting to cross right here. All right, so it says these lines through their points and their images are concurrent. So that's an important word. And this means that they have a point in common. And so the point in common, like we saw, is where they all cross. So that's why these are called concurrent. Let's get that focus for you. And the place that they cross is called the point of concurrency. And in this case, if you look closely, the point of concurrency is at 0, 0. That is the center of this enlargement. Everything is enlarging away from 0, 0. Then they're asking, how are the lengths in the pre-image related to the lengths of the image? So let's just take H to B. We went from negative 3 to positive 4. Okay, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So HB, segment HB, is 7. What about segment H, the image of, and the image of B. So from here, that's at negative 9, all the way to 12. So 9 and 12, that would be 21. 
So how are these two lengths related? We went from seven to 21. Okay, that is being multiplied by three. So just like we enlarged all of these coordinates by a magnitude of three, all of the side lengths are going to triple in size. And then how are the measures of these angles in the pre-image related to the measure of the angles in the image? This one's a little bit harder to see, but if you take a look, I'm gonna extend this line DE just so that I can measure the angle better. So I'm gonna measure this angle in here and then this angle in here, and I'm gonna see how are they related. So that one looks like it's a little bit above 50, a little bit above 50, and if I measure this one, you can see it's the same, a little bit above 50. So how are the measures of the angles in the pre-image related to that, to the new ones? They are the same. Okay, so the angles haven't changed. The side lengths have tripled, but the angles remain the same. All right, so we've kind of discovered some special properties here of these size transformations. Now let's go and actually talk about them and we'll understand kind of how this is gonna work for every size transformation that we make. So the definition of a transformation is a correspondence between two set of points, A and B, such that each point in set A corresponds to exactly one point in set B. So that's just going along with our pre-image and our image. Each point in set B corresponds to exactly one point in set A. So we've got corresponding points. We've got the original B, and then we have the image of B, and they correspond together. Okay, often we call this mapping. So a transformation is some, sometimes called mapping. And we say that a transformation maps a pre-image onto an image. So what we did here was we mapped the image. Okay, we mapped the image. So in this case, correspondence can be described as this. We had X, we had Y, we multiplied them by three. So we call this a size change or a size transformation and the magnitude was three. So we wanna use the proper vocabulary. We multiply the coordinates of all points on the plane. Okay, on and on and on. This just explains what we did. And then the origin zero, zero is on the line containing any point in its image. We showed that and we call that the center of the size change. So this little bit of notes here just puts some vocabulary, vocabulary to go along with what we just did. So the transformation is mapping the pre-image onto an image. We can show that this was the magnitude of three, what we multiplied by, called size transformation, and that point, okay, that was lined up with all of the lines that were created from the image and the pre-image, okay, those, that's called the center of the size change. Okay, and then our definition of size change, as long as k is not zero, the transformation under which the image of this point is the new point. You can see multiplied by the magnitude. That's the size change or size transformation of a magnitude k. So k is going to represent what we multiplied by. So k in this was three. You can see that's why k was here, lined up in that three spot. So that's the definition of a size change. So here's some notation. You go to the back. So if the original point W, the pre-image was six, negative 24, here's the notation. This is a size change. This is your K of W. So K, the magnitude is two thirds. So let's see what happens here. We know if we multiply by two or three or four, we're gonna get something bigger. What happens when we multiply by a fraction? So we're gonna take each one of these points and we're gonna get a, oops, I said S. We're gonna get a new set of coordinates for point W, so the image of. So we're gonna multiply each one by the magnitude of two thirds. So six times two thirds, multiply straight across, you get 12 over three, which is four. And negative 24 times two thirds, you're going to get negative 48 over 3, and that's negative 16. And so you can see when you multiply by something that's between 0 and 1, that's a fraction, this is going to 
shrink the numbers. When you multiply by a fraction, it shrinks it, a fraction that's between 0 and 1. And if we multiply by a number greater than 1, it's going to enlarge it. All right, so a couple things to pick up from example 1. This is the notation, size change, magnitude of point W. Now we get the image of W under that size change where the original coordinates were just multiplied by this number called the magnitude, which will be represented by K. All right, example two now. We're going to look back now at parallel lines. So going back to the figure that was in the activity we started with here, we're going to show that DE and the image of DE are parallel. So if we go find those in the picture, you've got DE and the image of DE, you can see they look parallel, but we do need to prove it. Now we showed that these angles were equal. So that helps us also see that these are gonna be parallel. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually run the slope formula. So if things are parallel, they have the same slope. And so pulling the information from the other side, we had D, which was one five. We had this right here. And the image of D then was 315. So under this size transformation of a magnitude of 3, D prime now is multiplying by 3, 315. The image of E oops, is under a size transformation of 3. So just getting used to seeing that notation, not being scared of it. Size transformation with a magnitude of 3 of E gives us the image of E. So again, multiplying by the three, negative nine, zero. Just double check it, make sure. That's what we had over here, negative nine, zero. Okay. And so now we're gonna go ahead and actually find these slopes. All right, so the original line, DE, remember slope is Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. So the original line, DE, subtract your Y's, 5 minus 0. Subtract your X's, 1 minus negative 3. Get 5 on the top, you get 4 on the bottom. Okay, the slope of DE is 5 over 4. Now let's find the slope of the image of DE. If they have the same slope, it proves that they are parallel. So we're going to use these points now. So we're going to subtract our y's on the top, 15 minus 0. Subtract our x's on the bottom. Make sure you go the same direction. So 15 minus 0, 3 minus negative 9. You get 15 on the top, and you get 12 on the bottom. And at first you might say, well, they don't have the same slope. But we do need to simplify. We can divide these by 3, and you get 5 over 4. They do have the same slope. And so this proves that they are parallel. And down here at the bottom now, here's some theorems that go along with everything we kind of just proved. So the size change theorem number one, the parallel property, under a size change magnitude k, the line through any two pre-image points is going to be parallel to the line through their images. We just proved that. Size change theorem two, Collinearity is preserved. So under a size change, the images of collinear points are still collinear. So we know collinear means things are on the same line. So what they're talking about is, so notice E and F and H and G and B more specifically, those were collinear. H, G, and B were all on the same line. And when we had this size transformation, the image of all of those points are still collinear. H, G and B, still on the same line, just like they started as. So if you have points that are collinear and you go through a size change, the new points, the image is still going to be collinear. That's what theorem two states. And we proved on the other side, the size change theorem three, an angle measure is preserved. So under a size change with a magnitude of K, an angle and its image will have the same angle measure.